Hello, uh, my name is Paul Taylor. I'm a partner in the Hill Dickinson Commodities Team. Whatever your view of Brexit, it has created one of the largest constitutional crises in modern British political history. Its impact on the laws of England and Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland cannot be underestimated. As a lawyer working in the international trade field, dealing with large-scale litigation, many clients have expressed concerns to me about how these changes could impact them. They've also wondered if Brexit will damage the UK's preeminent position in international dispute resolution, whether in arbitration or before the High Court. Although Brexit focuses attention on the UK as a whole, the dispute resolution hub remains London. London has long been seen as an attractive forum for international businesses using English law and jurisdiction clauses in their contracts. As a country with a long mercantile history, with strong financial institutions and an established rule of law, the UK has been a favoured nation for centuries for parties seeking commercially predictable and fair resolutions to their disputes. This expertise has been enhanced over recent decades by a substantial body of EU law. As the deadline for exiting the EU looms ever closer, how might this impact London's dispute resolution business? Well, first of all, let's spell out what won't change. The recognition and enforcement of English arbitration awards in the EU and elsewhere by virtue of the New York Convention won't change. So the powerhouse of international arbitration, which London is, need not be affected. Any recognition and enforcement of English High Court judgments by non-EU countries will not change. Conflict of law rules as between the UK and the EU, which we know as the Rome regulations, will remain in force. But for cross-border disputes between a UK domiciled party and an EU member state party, Brexit will bring about significant changes. The Brussels regulations provide a framework covering all sorts of key issues such as primacy between courts, service of court documents, recognition and enforcement of judgments, which will no longer apply to the UK after with the withdrawal date, or if there is uh, a deal uh, after the transition period. The UK would then become a third country. Its courts would revert to applying English common law rules in matters of judicial cooperation. EU state courts would no longer have to recognise an English jurisdiction clause or that an English court was first seized or to automatically recognise and enforce English court judgments. Although in the event of a no-deal Brexit, the UK government says it will give effect to the Hague Choice of Court Convention from the 1st of April this year, that only deals with jurisdiction as compared to the far broader scope of the Brussels regulations. And as we speak today, uh, a no-deal exit on the 29th of March is looking increasingly unlikely. Brexit may, however, bring about a few inadvertent benefits. Uh, one of these uh, is a renewed remedy for parties choosing English jurisdiction post-Brexit, which would be the power of an English court to grant an anti-suit injunction if an EU member state court was first seized, but that was in breach of an English jurisdiction clause. So whilst EU domicile parties may now pause to reflect on English jurisdiction clauses, non-EU parties should not. As for international arbitration, uh, we should again stress that contender jurisdictions only stand to benefit from Brexit in terms of perception, because neither the rules nor the recognition or enforcement of awards in English arbitration will be affected by an exit from the EU. For shipping and international trade disputes, the sum of arbitration references across all London dispute resolution centres, maritime and trade associations is greater than anywhere else in the world. In 2017, 1,496 cases were commenced before the LMAA, 
285 before the LCIA, and whilst other fora haven't published their data, hundreds of arbitrations will have been commenced before London-based trade associations such as GAFTA, FOSFA, LMAA, RSA, SAL, ICA, LME, BSEA, and so forth. So for all the legitimate concerns expressed currently about Brexit, for international arbitration in the UK, it should have no real impact. And on parties choosing jurisdiction clauses in new contracts, um, there will be uh, little to worry about. So, for all of the legitimate concerns expressed currently about Brexit, for international arbitration in the UK, it should have no real impact and should only have a minor effect on parties choosing jurisdiction clauses in new contracts. As with most legal issues, what we and our clients want is certainty and finality. So let's hope that as regards Brexit, we have, have that very soon.